What's up, language challengers? In the next few days, I will give you 30 mini mini lessons for Vietnamese. So if you are interested in learning Vietnamese, make sure to follow. Let's go. All right, so we will start with something very basic but necessary, which is the alphabet. Uh, I will not go through all the different letters and possible combinations, just a few that might be tricky for foreigners. There are, for example, three different letters for A. The normal A is simply a long A ah sound, as in ma, a ghost, or ba, father. And we have the A with the sign right here, which is simply a short A ah sound, as in nam, which means year, or number five, nam. So you don't say nam, but nam, or tam, to visit, tam. Lastly, we have A with the accent circonflex in French, and that is a short A uh sound. We will talk about that in a second. For example, duong, week, duong. You don't say duang or duang, but duong. Then we have three variations of the letter O. Um, the normal one is pronounced as O, for example, and do to be big, do, or la to worry. La. Then we have the O with the accent circumflex again. Uh, for example, go. Go means uh, young woman. Or um, toy, which means I. Toy. Last variation is the O with the hook. And that one is pronounced as U. Uh. So you get that sound if you say O and then you relax your lips. O, uh, O, uh, as in joy to play. Okay. All right, so the last letter that I'm going to cover is the letter U. So there are two variations. The first one, the normal one, is simply U, as in Yu, Yu, uncle, or Mung, Mung, to want. Okay, then we have the U with the hook again. And that one you can practice by saying U and then relaxing your lips. U, 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 as in Mui, number 10, Mui or du to give. Then we have two variations of the letter E. The normal one is pronounced as e, as in me, mother, me. So you don't say me, but me, or ve, to draw, ve. Then we have the letter E with this accent circumflex again. That one is the actual E sound, as in café, coffee, café, or um, V or D V to go home. All right, next we have the letter D, which is not pronounced as D, but more like a, the English Y sound, as in yes. For example, yet means translate. Yet, so you don't say that. That means to fart. Okay. Then we have the letter D with a vertical line. That one is the actual D sound, as in D to go, D or dabk to read. Dabk. Probably the most challenging part about learning Vietnamese are the tones. There are six tones in total, and we are going to have a look at them right now. Let's go. All right, so let's take the word ma, for example. The first tone is a mid tone, or also called the neutral tone. Ma, ma, which means ghost. So there are no diacritics or no markers on top of the letter A. Tone number two, which is ma, ma. So you start off pretty low, and you there's a falling tone, ma. That means but or however, ma. Tone number three is a mid rising tone. So ma, ma, which means mother, ma. So all three tones are ma, ma, ma. The fourth tone is ma. So you first go down, and then you go up with your voice, ma. Ma, that means grave. So the fifth tone is a little bit tricky. Um, it's similar to the previous fourth tone, but there is a short break in between. So ma, ma, instead of ma, you say ma, and that means horse. To be honest, I'm not very used to this fifth tone because in southern dialects, we don't really distinguish between the fourth and the fifth. So we both pronounce ma, so both as the fourth tone without the break in between. And the last tone is ma, ma. So also a falling tone with a stop at the end. That means uh, rice seedling. And let's compare the second with the last sixth tone, ma and ma. 
let's recap. Here are all the six tones together. Ma, 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 ma. The sentence structure in Vietnamese is the same as in English, meaning subject, verb, object. Um, I could say, for example, Toi la thai yao. Toi means I. La is to be. Thai yao, teacher. Toi la thai yao. A few more examples. Toi mung hao ting yik. Toi I. Mung is the modal verb for to want, to do something. Hao study, learn, ting viet. Vietnamese. Toi mung hao ting viet. If you want to form a negative sentence, for example, I don't want to study Vietnamese, you need to add the word come in front of the verb. For example, tôi không muốn học tiếng Việt. Tôi không muốn học tiếng Việt. For the verb to be, là, it's a little bit special. It's not enough to say không là, but you need to say không phải là. For example, tôi không phải là thầy giáo. Tôi là học sinh. Or, đây là một quả táo. Đây means this, là, to be. Mok means number one. Wa is a counter word. Talk, we talk about that later. Tao means apple. Đây là mok wa tao. Next topic, personal pronouns. There are quite a few ways to address people. Let's talk about the pronoun you and I. It depends on if you're male or female, social status, and so on. So today we will focus on the most common ones that you might hear. Let's go. All right, so personal pronoun I. The most neutral and polite expression is toi. Toi. If you're a male person who is older than the person you're talking to, then you could use an. If you're younger, you could say em. If you're an older female person, you can say ge. And if you're younger, female, then you say em. Another way to say I, as in first person singular, is men. Men. That can be used for male or female person. For example, you could say hôm nay mình không có thời gian. Hôm nay mình không có thời gian. Yet another way to say I is the pronoun Tao. Tao. That is very, very informal, so you can use it among very close friends or when you want to start a fight with someone. So, yeah, it's very vulgar. If the person you're talking to is around the same age, it's safe to use the word Bang. Bang means literally friend, but it can also mean you. So it can be used for male or female. Bang. If you're talking to a male person who is older than you, then you use an. An. If he is younger than you, then you use em. Em. If you're talking to a female person who is older than you, then you would use ye. Ye. If she is younger than you, you also use em. Em. If you're talking to a person who is a few years older than you and you want to sound polite, you could say go. Go for uh, like a young woman or a chú. Chú is for a male person. All right, so the last one for the pronoun you is a little bit special, and that is mày. Mày. Um, that is only used in two, uh, two occasions. One, to very, very close friends, or if you want to start a fight with someone. Number one to ten. Mọc. Mọc. Hai. Hai. Ba. Ba, bo, bo, nam, nam, sao, sao, bảy, bảy, tám, tám, chín, chín, mười, mười. The higher numbers are pretty easy. For example, eleven is literally ten, one, mười một, twelve, mười hai. Mười ba, mười bốn. Careful. Fifteen is mười lăm, not mười năm. Mười sáu, mười bảy, mười tám, mười chín. Careful. Hai mười, not hai mười. So twenty is hai mười. Another irregularity is, for example, the number twenty-one. So basically, you're saying twenty and then one, but it's not hai mười mộc, but instead hai mười mộc. Same for 31, ba mười mộc, and so on. In speaking, you might hear shortened versions for the 20s and the 30s. For example, instead of saying hai mười mộc, you say ham mộc, ham hai, ham ba, 30s, uh, ba mộc, 
32, 33, 34, 35. Lastly, by numbers, you might also hear the expression 20, for 20, 30, 40, 40. So, for example, when you're buying something, you might hear 50,000 Vietnamese down. So now you can say stuff like three books. That would be ba cuốn sách or ba quyển sách or let's say five cats. Nam con mèo. Nam con mèo. Don't forget the counter word. Next topic, how to form questions in Vietnamese. There are several ways. Um, let's have a look at three different ways today. Let's go. Easiest way to form a question is by adding phái cong at the end. For example, em tên Hoa means her name is Hoa. Now, if you want to ask the question, em tên Hoa phái cong, is her name Hoa? So it's similar to isn't it in English. Another way to form a question is by adding ca in front of the verb and then cong at the end of the sentence. For example, bạn học tiếng Việt. You're studying Vietnamese. Now the question form, bạn có học tiếng Việt không? And the third way to form a question is by adding a ah at the end of the sentence. You use it if you expect a positive answer or if you're surprised. For example, anh là người Đức à? You're German, right? Or, ah, anh biết nói You know Vietnamese? So by adding the ending a ah at the end, that's more an informal way to form questions. Another example, Ủa hôm nay anh không làm à? Um, you could instead use ha as well. So, Ủa hôm nay anh không đi làm hả? If you want to count something in Vietnamese, you need so-called counter words. For instance, one apple, you can't just say mok tao, you need to say mok wa tao or mok chai tao or in southern Vietnamese mok chai bom. The tricky thing now is there are a lot of different counter words. For example, for books, you don't say chai or wa, but you say cuong or wing sat. Mok cuong, mok wing sat. So the structure here is the number or the amount, the counter word, and then the object. Chai or wa are used for uh, fruits. So you could say, for example, mok chai tui, one banana. Let me just give you two more counter words. The most common one is gai, gai, that's um, for inanimate objects. For example, mok gai bang, mok gai ghe, mok gai ao. All right, so the last counter word for today, um, gong. Gong is used mainly for animals. For example, mok gong mèo, mok gong chó, mok gong rong. <laughs> What's up, language challenges? Before we move on to more complex sentence structures, let's have a look at five very basic uh, verbs first. Let's go. Verb number one, có. Có means to have or to be. For example, uh, tôi không có xe máy. I don't have a motorbike. Or a dog. Có một con chó. There is a dog. So here, có means is. Verb number two. Đi. Đi means to go. For example, chúng tôi đi Hà Nội. We're going to Hanoi. Or thứ hai, bạn có đi học không? So có không is the structure for a question. You can leave out the có as well. Verb number three. Thích. Thích means to like something or like doing something. For example, tôi không thích đi học. I don't want to go to school. Or bạn thích ăn gì? What do you want to eat? Verb number four. Muốn, muốn means to want. For example, tôi muốn mua xe mới. I want to buy a new car. Or em có muốn đi Sài Gòn không? Do you want to go to Saigon? Last verb for today. Phải, phải means must or have to do something. For example, anh phải học thêm tiếng Việt. I have to study more Vietnamese. Or anh phải làm bài bây giờ. I have to do homework now. <laughs> Moving on to simple sentence structures. If you want to say this is something, you need to use the form đây là and then the object. For example, đây là một cuốn sách. Đây means this. Là is the verb to be. Một cuốn sách, a book. If you want to talk about something specific, you can use the form guy, well, the counter word guy, plus the noun or the object, plus the word nai, this. Guy nai, for example, guy ge nai, this chair, guy ge nai dep. If you're talking about something that is further away from you, so close to the listener, you have to use the form guy da, da means that or over there. For example, cái đàn đó, that guitar, cái đàn đó mắc, that guitar is expensive. Lastly, we have cái kia. Cái kia also means that, 
but this time it's further away from you and your listener. So, for example, cái nhà kia nhỏ lắm. That house is very small. Cái nhà kia nhỏ lắm. Now that you know the difference between này đó and kia, you also have to be careful about the right counterword. For example, this book here, you don't say cái sách này, but you say cuốn sách này. So, sat requires cuốn. That cat over there would be con mèo đó. So, for animals, we use con instead of cái. Or, for example, that apple over there, further away from both of you, you would say trái tao kia. Trái for fruits. First question word is I. I means who. So, for example, you could say ai đó. Who's there? Or có ai muốn đi theo không? Does anyone want to join us? Or come with us. Z means what, or as southerners would pronounce it, yi. Example, em đang làm gì? What are you doing now? Or hôm qua bạn mua gì? What did you buy yesterday? Đâu or ở đâu means where. For example, um, bạn từ đâu đến? Where do you come from? Or em làm việc ở đâu? Where do you work? Next one, tại sao or vì sao means why. For example, tại sao bạn muốn học tiếng Việt? Why do you want to study Vietnamese? Or vì sao em bỏ anh? Why did you leave me? <laughs> now means which. So the structure would be counterword noun plus now. For example, bạn thích cuốn sách nào? Which book do you like? Or bạn muốn mua chiếc xe nào? Which car do you want to buy? Next one, bao nhiêu. Bao nhiêu means how or how much. For example, anh bao nhiêu tuổi? How old are you? Or cô ấy cao bao nhiêu? How tall is she? Another question word for how much or how many is mấy. You usually use it if you expect the answer to be lower than 10. So to a kid, you can ask em mấy tuổi or em mấy tuổi rồi? How old are you? All right, so the last one. Thế nào, như thế nào, or sao means how, as in how did you do that? Em làm sao vậy? Or anh học tiếng Việt như thế nào? How do you study Vietnamese? What's up, language challengers? Today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about adjectives in the Vietnamese. Let's go! First thing, you don't need the verb to be, so you don't need la. If you want to say, for instance, this car is old, Chiếc xe này cũ. So, cũ means old, but you can remember it as to be old. Other adjectives, for example, um, Chiếc xe này mới. This car is new. Or you could say, Chiếc xe này còn mới. This car is still new. Or, Chiếc xe này mắc. This car is expensive. Mắc, expensive. Second thing you need to know, if you want to describe a noun directly, so instead of saying, the cat is black, you want to say, the black cat. In that case, you would say con mèo đen. So the adjective đen, black, comes after the noun. So the position of the adjective is different than in English. If you want to say, for instance, beautiful weather, beautiful, đẹp. Weather, thời tiết. Now, the correct version would be thời tiết đẹp, not đẹp thời tiết. There are three different ways to say that something is very than the adjective. For instance, cuốn sách này rất hay. Hay means good. Rắc means very, so rắc hay. Rắc always comes before the adjective. You can also use the word lắm. Lắm also means very. Um, however, it is used after the adjective. For instance, hôm nay ăn mệt lắm. Mệt. Tired, mệt lắm. Not, lắm, mệt. Or you could use the word wa with the meaning very. That one can be used in front or after the adjective. For instance, Bài học này chán quá, very boring. Or phim này quá hay, this movie is very good. If you want to compare two people or two things with adjectives, you need the word hơn. Hơn is used after the adjective. For instance, an cao hơn em. Cao means tall, cao hơn means taller. Another example, cái này mắc hơn. Cái này means this one. Mắc means expensive, to be expensive. And then mắc hơn means to be more expensive than something else, another thing. If you want to say that something is as good or as interesting as something else, you need the word bằng. Um, for example, anh cao bằng em. 
So you are as tall as me. Lastly, if you want to say that something is the best, the cheapest, the most beautiful one, then you need the word nyuk after the adjective. For instance, an cao nyuk, you're the tallest, or hoa nai đẹp nhất. Xin chào các bạn. Hello everyone. Um, last time we covered a few verbs, but so far we only talked about present tense. So what about the other tenses? Let's figure that out today. Don't worry, it's pretty simple in Vietnamese. Let's go. If you're talking about something that is happening right now, you need the word đang plus the verb. For example, bạn đang làm gì? What are you doing right now? You could answer, tôi đang làm việc. I'm working right now. <laughs> if you are talking about the past, you need to form đã plus verb plus rồi at the end of the sentence. For example, anh hùng đã ăn rồi. Hùng already ate. Um, so đã is optional, you can leave it out as well sometimes. However, the cool thing is if there's already a word or expression that indicates past, then you don't need to use the đã rồi form. You can just say hôm qua chúng tôi ăn phở. Easy. Another example, um, tuần trước tôi đi Hà Nội. So uh, last week means tuần trước. And then, so in that case, you don't need to say tôi đã đi blah blah blah. So just you can use the present tense, đi. And for the future tense, you need to use the word sẽ in front of the verb. For example, tôi sẽ học nhiều hơn. I'm going to study more. Or chúng tôi sẽ đi Huế. Here again, if there is a word or expression that indicates future, for example, tomorrow, ngày mai, then you don't need the word sẽ. You can simply say ngày mai tôi không đi làm. I'm not going to work tomorrow. If something just happened a few minutes ago, you can use the expression vừa plus the verb, or mới and the verb, or both vừa mới and the verb. For example, tôi vừa gặp em hòa, tôi mới gặp em hòa, tôi vừa mới gặp em hòa. If you're talking about something that is in the close future, so something is about to happen, then you use the word sắp. For example, chúng tôi sắp đi Huế rồi. Uh, yeah, it's common to use rồi at the end of the sentence as well. Sắp rồi. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked this video. Again, please let me know what you think of this different format. And yeah, see you in the next video. Uh, keep challenging yourself.